How's it going, Short Kings? It is the end of the season, and we've got a fantastic offseason to go through after going 9-4 and four and winning the Armed Forces Bowl. Just taking a quick look at stats, we can see that uh, Tommy Armstrong, Luke Falk, and Josh Rosen are the top three passers this year. Uh, Richie Kirk, 76th, uh, just over 1,800 passing yards. On the ground, Talib Noel can't quite crack the top 50, has a thousand yards on the season, but uh, I, I, I'm curious to know how close he would have been to hitting that 50th spot. AJ Norton is our receiving leader, only 71st in the nation. This is certainly nothing like a ridiculous 1500 yard season, but he, it's a very respectable 705. Keon Wilcox will crack the top 10 for sacks. Uh, with nine this season, puts him at seventh in the nation, and only one off from being tied for first. If we look at the interceptions, Devon Lester with two is uh, is our pick leader on the team, but gosh, 363rd. A lot of interceptions thrown this year. We will take a quick look at the stats, and I'm going to go ahead and say that this is pretty impressive. Over 6,000 total yards for the team, but only 3,400 of it is on offense, which means either the rest of it is defensive or most likely a ton of special teams, a lot of return yards. Uh, 2,100 through the air, 1,300, almost 1,400 on the grounds, um, with not a great points per game, 23.6. Um... 10 passing touchdowns, 2 rushing touchdowns, 16 sacks allowed, and only 172 first downs on the year. Defensively, we allowed almost 4,000 yards, um, 2,500 through the air and 1,400 on the ground. So that's uh, that's a pretty stark difference in, in our rush defenses. Hopefully going to just continue to improve. Uh, we gave up 272 points, but we picked up 39 sacks. Uh, the bad news is no fumbles and four interceptions is all that our defense can manage to do in the takeaway department. If we take a look at conversions, we uh, had the fewest third down conversions in the nation. I'm all the way at the bottom of this list. However, our third down percentage, our you know our conversion percentage, all the way up at 43. So, um, if we had just attempted more third downs, we would be way higher on this list. We also end up 52% uh, on the year on our fourth downs and 60% on our two point conversions. We manage a pretty fantastic, I would say, 84% uh, percent conversion rate in the red zone, but allowing an even better 88% uh, conversion rate on defense. Uh, this is probably just because of the way that simulations work and also the fact that we play six minute quarters. But we were technically the best, uh, the most disciplined teams when it came to penalties. Only 23 of them for less than 300 yards. And again, scrolling all the way to the bottom, third worst team in the nation at uh, turnovers, a minus 17 differential. That's pretty, pretty bad. Um, we threw 15 interceptions, dropped the ball six times, and we could only get those four takeaways, those four interceptions. So uh, if we can get this a lot closer to zero this next year, we're going to be looking incredible in the conference. After that good look, we're going to go ahead and advance our way to the end of the season, and I'm excited to see what we can pull in recruiting-wise, uh, and just right away, recruiting battles with a lot of guys. Um, you know, we have a ton of halfbacks on the rosters and corners, so if we can't manage to get these guys, uh, Grady Marks and Gabe Hollins, the two 75-plus overall middle linebackers, are going to be huge, and we might go all in on our points towards them. You know... Hawk Disco in his first year goes nine and four. Um, target wins this year was six, but they don't offer us a contract extension yet. They're going to ride it out and see uh, how well we do next year. Maybe they're expecting a little bit of a drop off there in the uh, athletic director's office. After the coaching carousel, we're going to take a look to see what kind of weird stuff has gone on in terms of changing positions. Mike Norvell is the new head coach at Arkansas State. Jim Mora will replace Gus Malzahn at Auburn. PJ Fleck is the new head coach at Fresno State. Major Applewhite is now at Indiana. Lincoln Riley has gone to Iowa State. Brent Venables is the head coach at Kansas State. 
after Bill Snyder retired. Mike Stoops is now at Maryland. Jeff Brom is at South Carolina. Tom Herman is at USC. Apparently this game, Clay Helton can get fired, unlike real life. And apparently at, at our rivals Western Arizona, Tim DeRuder is the new head coach. The sad, sad moments though here are, are coming as uh, we'll go ahead and queue up the vitamin C because it's graduation time. Donnie Schaefer, the redshirt senior, 82 overall, one of the best players on the roster, is going to leave after having a 22 catch season for 395 yards. That's an average of 18. And while he didn't find the end zone, um, that average of 30 yards uh, per game is honestly really solid. We're going to definitely miss him. Five foot six, one of the shorter players on the roster. But that uh, 92 speed, 93 acceleration has been incredible. Chip Brelove, another red shirt senior. Gosh, we got a lot of those that are leaving. Uh, he's going to be graduating here. Honestly, Chippy, not the greatest backup quarterback. You know, earlier in this, I said that we won the Armed Forces Bolt. We lost it. <laughs> I, I blocked out that loss already until Chip came up. That's right. Chip came in, couldn't win us the bowl game. Um, he finished this, this season with one touchdown and four interceptions on a 47% season, throwing for only 253 yards. Jeremy Lawrence and Gavin Tyson at the defensive tackle spots are going to be sorely missed. Two guys that were picking up tons of sacks this year. And along with that, Keon Wilcox, another redshirt senior and the sack leader on this team. 5'8", 250 pounds. It's massive. We will also lose a couple of linebackers in Brent Caps and Brock Ferris. Again, two more solid players that are going to be hard to replace, but hopefully uh, with those middle linebackers coming in, we can figure something out. And then finally, the, the last player who has seen a lot of time, the captain, another redshirt senior, the tight end, Dane Upshaw. 80 overall, uh, 23 catches, 337 yards. Again, no receiving touchdowns, but we only had 10 of them on the season anyways. But a long of 54, an average of 26 per game, and only two drop passes on the season. We are definitely going to miss all these players. I, I don't imagine any of them will go to the NFL just because uh, this game, when it's drafting, players relies very heavily on uh, their size. So all these guys being so short, maybe running backs uh, will be able to make it, uh, but they got to be good. But size and weight are, are so important that uh, I have a feeling we're going to have a hard time getting anybody drafted, no matter how good they are. We're going to go ahead and advance towards transfer requests and see if we can get some free players. Again, if they're not uh, within our our size limits, we can't accept them. Six foot seven. Oh my gosh. Sorry. The the freshman pass rusher out of Hawaii, Vianne Moala, is not going to be able to come play for us. And Malik Clark, six foot four, uh, the freshman left guard, is also not going to be able to come. Taking a quick look again. As I predicted, no players getting drafted this year. But we can see a team like uh, Alabama. Well, uh, three first rounders. As we head into the recruiting portion of this offseason, we really got to knock this one out of the park. We'll go ahead and sort this by overall. And we have 13 guys currently committed. Apparently, I didn't set up visits for 13 of them, but I don't know what that's about. <laughs> um, I really do think that going... All in on the two middle linebackers will be clutch. If we go through just the positions, we can see 14 running backs. Four wide receivers, of which we've already grabbed two. Two middle linebackers, six corners, uh, where we have four of them, and a strong safety that we've picked up. Uh, as well as we got Rick, Rick Thompson, the punter. So really, the middle linebacker spot is going to be one of those ones that's going to be hard to come by. And if we don't pick them up every single time, we are going to have a hard time finding any sort of lineman. In fact, our line is going to become atrocious, I believe, in these upcoming years. All right, well, 5,000 points into Grady and Gabe, and let's just let it ride and hope for the best.
We are just about there now, folks. National Signing Day is just around the corner. I'm really curious. If we don't pick up these two, we are in trouble. Hopefully, we get somebody else. Huck Disco will get a level up to five. That's going to be tremendous for next year. And we did not get Grady Marks. We do get Gabe Holland, but Grady Marks is going to go to Florida. We couldn't pick up anybody else either. So it said that we signed eight players. Uh, which usually means uh, the CPU has this weird habit of signing players that you never looked at. And woo, we were way off. Uh, Florida really wanted Grady. But occasionally, sometimes the CPU will sign players to your team that you've never looked at, you've never scouted, you've never recruited, even in the slightest. So at some point, we're going to have to go through and edit our rosters or, or cut the players that they put because I guarantee you they will not fit our height requirements. A quick look here. Uh, if you can read, you already can see this, but we finish with the 64th best class in the country. 14 three stars, two two stars, and five one stars for a total of 21 players signed on to the class. Somehow we beat out Georgia, who doesn't sign a whole lot. I'm always curious. The teams that get the five stars, honestly, this isn't too egregious. Sometimes you'll see teams with like five, five stars, but Oklahoma and Nebraska with two each, and uh, they will be the one and two classes. Bunch of four stars and a bunch of three stars for them as well. This is another part of the offseason that is going to be incredibly important for us. It's the position changes. I always go first to athlete, and here we can see so Sean Morales and Victor Young are two players that the game just automatically signed to us. You can see six foot two and six foot four. They don't belong on the team. Um, and even though it might hurt us a little bit when we get into the offseason, instead of just changing their their measurables, we're just gonna cut them first. Anybody who does not meet the height requirements is going to get cut. So I will not change their position unless it forces me to. Uh, but at quarterback, we won't see a move. Um, Ralph Nunez and William Pruitt are maybe going to get to see some time, but I think that Richie Kirk is going to become a little bit more serviceable next year. Running back-wise, here's where we, we got a, a lot to change. So Talib Noel and Donald Irby are still going to be uh, Arby's one and two. And Paul Lamb will probably take that third spot. 91 speed, 95 acceleration is pretty impressive. So the question is, where can these guys go? Chad Weldon, Cedric Lee, Anton Landry, Drew Bell, and Zach Smith. I think we might convert a couple of them to fullbacks so that we can convert our fullbacks to offensive linemen. And I just want to take stock. We might not be in too much trouble right now, but we still want to get these guys uh, switched as early as possible so that they, become, they can become better o O lineman by the time their senior season comes around. Two left tackles, two left guards, two centers. Of course, some of these guys might have been accidentally added, so we could see someone get cut. Two right guards, three right tackles, four left ends, and uh, to the the two left ends that we have are going to be cut. Um, Brandon Yates. As much as I would love to get a seventy-eight overall <laughs> gem uh, left end freshman, he's going to be cut because he's six foot three. Uh, same thing for Ryan Pennington. Almost there, but five foot eleven, too tall for us. So two left ends, one right end, three defensive tackles, and here's two more players that'll have to be cut. Brett Sapp, six foot four, adios, and same with Nick McDaniel. The middle linebacker spot, we uh, we have Gabe Holland. The, the biggest problem with Gabe is he's a JUCO guy, but only a sophomore. That helps a lot. Um, one right outside linebacker plenty of corners uh some of these guys might we, we might move corners or safeties to linebacker and move the linebackers to defensive line one free safety four strong safeties i don't think i noticed this earlier but colton harrison another uh guy who will leave he's not actually going to be on our team at tight end so from the fullbacks we are going to move both of them to i think guard positions honestly uh Lamont doesn't look too terrible. 67 overall as a guard and 69 as a uh, center. That's that's pretty impressive. We're actually going to go ahead and move Lamont 
all the way to the center spot and he will probably become our starting center at 5'5", 221 pounds. Zach Ingram is going to go ahead and become a left guard. Tight end wise, we're going to take our tight ends and also move them to line spots and then we're going to move some wide receivers to tight ends. And I'm going to make each um, tight end a, a tackle, so a left and a right tackle. This will give us some room. We can redshirt. Well, we can't redshirt any tackles, but we can redshirt hopefully somebody. Holy shiza. Everybody on this uh, on this team has apparently already been redshirted. We'll, we'll see what we can do. So plenty of running backs. Who's the strongest of the running backs? Zach Smith. He's going to become our fullback. Landry is also going to become a fullback. We're going to sit the rest of the guys for at least a year here. Now into the wide receivers. Uh, we're just going to take the tallest guys and move them to tight end, except Gene Nunez. Uh, he'll continue to be a wide out. So the two freshmen, uh, Thomas Coleman and Dylan Davis will become tight ends. That should also help help us if we maybe need to move them to the offensive line next year. They'll, they'll have a little bit of a jump start on their blocking capabilities. And now we're also going to take the slowest player, which just happens to be AJ Norton, and move him to that tight end spot as well. So we have two left ends and one right end, which means we need at least another end. Uh, so we'll move um, a defensive tackle to an end spot. In fact, we might move two. I think we'll probably just move one for now. And then wherever we have a lot of extra talent at linebacker, we'll move to defensive end. So Talib Hudson, another Talib on this team, a uh, redshirt freshman. He will become a defensive tackle. He actually goes up one overall, so that could help us quite a bit. Remember, uh, McDaniel and Sapp will be cut. Middle linebacker wise, uh, I'm just grabbing the guys who are the slowest. I want I want faster linebackers, so we're grabbing the slowest guys and moving them to defensive tackle. And again, uh, Gabe Holland. As much as we loved to grab him, he's also going to become a defensive, uh, probably a defensive end, moving up to a 78 overall. So our left ends. We now have three, and I'm going to, again, just kind of do the exact same thing. We're going to move Deontay Alford to uh, that tackle spot uh, because I, I did bring it to Lee Hudson to the end and not a tackle. Made him go up to a 71 overall, and that should give us plenty of depth. We'll have uh, two left ends, three right ends, and three defensive tackles. Two left linebackers, one in the middle, two on the right, uh, and now we'll move a, a couple of safeties and corners around and just get this all worked out i'll jump forward when i tell you what we've actually done okay we've moved a couple guys around uh Burdett morris is now a middle linebacker and caleb jenkins one of our strong safety commits will be playing the right outside linebacker at free safety we have moved uh devin lester desi ham kyle williams and bobby hunter to the free safety spot from corners and Patrick Johnson will be the lone corner that becomes a strong safety. Uh, kicker and puncher wise, we're going to move Thompson to a kicker spot. He goes down one overall, but we'll have Brad for another year uh, after this. While well, this will be Dono Jolly's final year. So we just, you know, allow Rick Thompson to become a uh, place kicker instead of a punter. And just until we cut these guys, we're going to move both athletes to a uh, quarterback to make it easy to get rid of them. Now we get to move on to the best part, which is training. Oh, I'm excited to see how good some of these players get and how fast some of them uh, become. Ooh, these are some good training results. A lot of players in the 80 overall. And guys like Devin Lester, gonna be massive. 80 overall and he's only a sophomore. Uh, Donald Irby is now a true sophomore at an 81. Khalif James, 82. Richie Kirk goes up 5 to an 83. Talib Noel goes up to an 83 as well. And Rick Penn, hoping to have a good senior season at the corner spot, uh, also at that 83 spot. G. Nunez, whole, are you kidding me? That's some of the... What do we got going on in the water here? Plus two speed and plus three acceleration for Gene Nunez. Typically, you don't see guys go up plus two or plus three. But uh, Kevin McMillan 
and Phil Durbin wide receivers also get that boost. We got some real speed, and Gene Nunez is going to absolutely win returner of the year for his second year in a row. Strength-wise, we get, we get a couple of solid players up into the 80s, um, mostly linemen, which is going to be incredible. Uh, Richie's now up to 90 speed, 93 acceleration, with 80 throw power and 79 throw accuracy. So we do have a better thrower in Ralph Nunez, and he will honestly probably be the second stringer just because of that arm, but he's also the slowest quarterback on the roster. Running back wise, I think we'll continue to keep it to Lieb and Donald, although I will either set up some formation subs or, or just change the sub rate because we want to see Donald a whole lot more this year. The rest of the, the training will wait until we get into the depth charts to take a real look at, and instead we'll go and cut some of the fat from this program. Or maybe I should say height. Alrighty, so we only need to cut four, four players. We will cut more than that because there's more tall people on the roster than that, but we're just going to go through anybody who is uh, five foot ten or taller is getting cut off the roster. So Brandon Yates, sorry you lied about your uh, your paperwork and your height on it. And as a result, we're not going to honor that scholarship that you tricked us into giving you. Same thing for Sean Morales. Brett Sapp is going to get cut as well as Colton Harrison, Nick McDaniel, Ryan Pennington, James Stevens. Ooh, they won't let me cut James Stevens because we... I should have... Oh. Okay. Well, James, is he's only 40 overall. I think he must be a walk-on. So we'll just edit his height and, and make sure that he, uh, he, he probably won't see any playing time anyways. I guess when you're down here in the 40 overalls, it doesn't matter a huge amount. Victor Young was one of the athletes that we set to quarterback and we can cut and then everything else. So we have we have one player that we need to edit, but we get the roster down to 67 players. And, uh, you know, the good thing about doing that is it allows us a lot of room in over recruiting certain spots. So with all that done, we're going to go ahead and move into the preseason. It's 2014 now, and we're officially in the preseason. I like to wait a little bit for my recruiting board. Uh, I like to, you know, take a take another look at what we have. So we'll go through and we'll decide who to redshirt. Uh, probably a lot of players here. Um, and then make sure I get that one edit done. So Chad Weldon, Cedric Lee, Drew Bell, we're going to sit all of them. Remember, if need be, you can always burn a redshirt, but you can't uh, retroactively apply, apply it. So... Uh, we want to see, you know, if maybe some of these players can become a little bit better and, and actually see the field. I, I don't typically use fullbacks in a lot of my plays. So while we have Landry and Smith, we are going to sit both of them. Ooh, it won't let us. We'll just uh, sit Smith then. I know what we'll go the other way around. Landry has more potential, so we'll sit him as a true freshman and you know, Landry will see the field if for some reason we need a fullback. He is the stronger of the two. Wide receiver-wise, we're not going to sit anybody. I was thinking about maybe sitting Howard Flanagan, but that 94 speed, 97 acceleration, uh, that's that's pretty impressive. We will sit uh, one of these tight ends, whoever's stronger. I think, yeah, Thomas Coleman. Uh, he could be something by the time he's a, a true senior i'm not sure what but he already has ridiculous speed for a tight end um we might we might be able to find some weird use for him though can't sit really any of our offensive linemen um or our defensive linemen we we can sit uh james stevens who's that that defensive tackle again uh, so the way that we'll edit him, we'll, we'll make him shorter. We'll give him a little bit more speed and acceleration in exchange uh, for some strength and awareness. Can't really afford to sit a whole lot of these guys. Preston Blanchard uh, can sit. You know what? No, I, I again, I really think that speed kills in this game. Juwan Britton, the true freshman uh, out of California can sit as a corner and that way by the time he's a senior his stats are going to be pretty incredible he's he's already 72 overall as a true freshman um, give him a few years and he should be at least in the mid 80s uh, free safety wise we're going to do a lot of the same stuff just sit Bobby Hunter and Kyle Williams and then at the strong safety we'll sit Patrick Johnson 
And uh, also Rick Thompson as our kicker. Uh, again, I want him to be uh, as good as possible after Jolly leaves next year. Now that we have all the red shirts set up properly, I'm going to go ahead and auto reorder the depth chart and then just take a look to see what we have. So we wanted William Pruitt to be the backup behind Ralph Nunez at the quarterback spot. I'm fine with the way that our running backs look. Honestly, at fullback, we're probably... Is Ingram a starter already? No, we're going to put Zach Ingram, uh, a left guard, as the starting fullback. He's 51 overall. He's just as strong. He's actually faster. Uh, his awareness and his ball carrying probably won't be good. But again, if you could just throw in an extra lineman uh, as a blocker on a play, that could be huge in opening up a run. The only other spots that I'm really interested in changing will be our kick return and punt return. Again, you always just want to make sure you got your fastest guy. Or for us, we want to make sure we have our fastest guy. So that's hilarious. G Nunez is the fastest player on the team. Ralph Nunez is the slowest. But we will throw Gene into the kick return and punt return spot. And I want... Uh, who's our second fastest player? Can we put Zach Casey as the uh, yeah the second string returner if Gene gets a little bit too tired near the end of a game? So the depth chart is set up. And let's go ahead and take a look at our custom schedules. Uh, they have us with two FCS teams. That's interesting. Um, I want to buy here instead of Arkansas. I think that buy late in the season could be huge. And then we, I never like to have week one open. So if we can play like Western Arizona one of these weeks, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, we will just go ahead and I think we'll, we'll kind of randomize a lot of these. Here's Western Arizona for week two in place of one of the FCS teams. But yeah, week one, we're going to just... I'm going to close my eyes and just in my head, I'm going to count down for a couple seconds and uh, we'll see who do we get. I know you can't see me closing my eyes, but you'll have to just take my word and we will get Air Force, the Falcons. Um, interesting. And the FCS Northeast team. Again, I don't think that we need to play an FCS team. So I'm going to close my eyes again and uh, we might do this a couple times until we get a ranked opponent. Yeah, I don't want Louisiana. There we go. Kansas State on the second try will work. We'll, we'll travel to Manhattan. Gives us a C-plus strength of schedule. And uh, ULM is our third one. We might randomize, or our fourth out of conference. We might randomize this as well. We do currently have seven home games, which is perfect. So whoever we play, we get them uh, in the mine. Again, close my eyes to see what we manage to get out of this. And we don't do FCS teams. Actually, are there? there's no ranked teams even available here. So let me just think of what sounds fun. We could try to rematch Fresno State. We could play a Power 5 school. And you know, actually, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to Kansas. No. I feel like I play Notre Dame all the time in my dynasties. We're going to go with TCU as our fourth and final home game. We will have them traveling, which is a bit unrealistic. Um, but again, we, we want all those, those home games that we can get. And, you know, now that I think about it, we're, we're going to keep TCU as a home game, but I don't remember if we went on the road to Western Arizona year one or not. So last year we played Western Arizona in the mine. This year we're going to go on the road to Savannah stadium. And we've got two ranked opponents on the, on the board and going on the road there. Uh, and as well as playing TCU gives our strength of schedule a, a B minus rating, which is fantastic. And hopefully we can just knock that out. At least getting back to a bowl would be huge. Final thing to do this offseason now is the recruiting. We maybe in the future we'll do some user type uh, created recruits. But for the for the time being, we will just auto generate them all. And hopefully RN Jesus is on our side as it creates players that are five foot nine or shorter we need as many as we can get so if we go to search if we go to height five foot five to five foot nine how many do we get to work with only 50 only 50 players that we can look at recruiting wise this season right off the bat alex daniels a 71 overall running back has a deal breaker with us what's it because of playing time probably wow conference prestige is his deal breaker it's his most important we gotta see but even that's not enough for him. That hurts because we have an A and an A plus for everything else. Alex, man, you're, you're making a mistake. 
you know, the good news is, as I scrolled through there real quick, I've seen a lot of uh, corners and, and some linebackers and safeties. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and throw pretty much everybody onto the board that we can. No athletes to work with. No quarterbacks. Quarterbacking is going to be difficult. I might have to find somebody who has some sort of throwing and then just put them as a, uh, a quarterback and redshirt them. There are a few fullbacks. Uh, we're at least going to try to get Kyle Jackson, the number one fullback in the country. Um, a 4 5 six, 40. He's got a solid bench and squat. He could be an incredible lineman for us. And we'll take a look at uh, Antoine Copeland and Robert Schroeder as well. No tight ends. No offensive or defensive linemen. Three linebackers, but again, we can only look at two of them. Because Brandon Smith, what's his deal breaker? Proximity to home. You know, he's from Florida. Going up to Maine, I don't blame him. But hopefully we can get Stan Williams, the number four middle linebacker. And again, a pretty quick guy. Corner-wise, we got a, a whole lot of guys to look from. And at some point in the season, we will most likely uh, scout every single one of these guys. But I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down again. Uh, corners can turn into safeties, who can then turn into linebackers, who can turn into defensive linemen. So we we are going to look at every single one of these guys. And uh, I might set a cutoff at like, you know, you got to at least be 65 overall to come onto the team. But uh, we need something at the very least. The one strong safety also has a deal breaker in proximity to home. Man, a kid from Minnesota just doesn't want to go all the way to Maine. That's a bummer. And, and one of the worst parts about uh, us being a team in Maine. One punter, Josh Timmons. You know, maybe we could get lucky. It won't show his stuff, but occasionally you'll find, uh, you know, punters and kickers who have a little bit of arm power. And uh, since we've looked at everything else, I guess we're just basically adding uh, running backs and wide receivers. Uh, we get something. Sean Thibodeau. Shout out to uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, by the way. Good dogs. Sterling Riviera, Reggie Broussard, uh, Bernard Saria, Joe Green, Andre Everett. These are some names, dude. David Pope, I like it. James Underwood, Kyle Arnold. Old two first names there. Steven Jackson and Joe McAfee. We'll add him for the brand. South Sioux City, Nebraska. And that's how you, you know, when there's only 50 players to look at, a few of them have deal breakers and you can throw 35 onto the board. We can pretty much look at almost everybody available to us, which is kind of ridiculous. We're going to go by overalls now and just see who the best players are and see what we're going to get lucky with. Kyle Jackson, the fullback. He goes down to a 77, but still is going to be fantastic for us. That 80 strength would be a fantastic lineman, I think. Drew Christensen will go up to 80 overall. Stan Williams up to 78. Dominic Brigham up to 75. Tony Burgess is our first gem of the season up to 78. Uh, a lot of good corners so far. John Miner, back-to-back -back gems for us. He'll go up to 79. Jorge Britton, another gem. That's three in a row. He goes up to 79. There's no way we keep finding him, right? Matt Williams goes down to 69. Thank God it was going to be too much. Uh, and I got to refresh this because it's showing us Josh Timmons twice. Okay, now we can actually look at Josh. 74 overall punter. It doesn't show his arm stuff, but again, occasionally you find kickers who can throw. Marvin Schmidt goes down a little bit. Um, we've already looked at a few of these guys. Josiah Parker goes down to 68. Adrian Stewart, another gem, goes up to 74. David Pope, back-to-back -back gems again. He goes up to 73. Sean Thibodeau goes down to 62. It's a shame because I love the name. Kyle Hunter goes down to 64. Daniel Williams goes up to 68. Joe Green up to 68 as well. John Malone to 69. Reggie Broussard to 66. Travis, oh, uh, again, sometimes it changes who you're scouting. Uh, whoever that last person was, they went up, I think, to 66 as well. Uh, it might have actually been Reggie Broussard, uh, Broussard. I'm not sure. But that will do our scouting for the day. There's a few guys to look at um, down here at the bottom. The lower, lower overall players. 
Some of them might just get replaced with more running backs, but uh, I, I gotta think some of these corners are a little bit safe. Same with the fullback, just because of their position. We will go ahead and put our one coach level into Hawk Disco here early in the year. I'm gonna go with the opener, get those early points, see if we can lock down some recruits early. Uh, you know, allow us to focus in on, on some of the more uh, must-haves later in the season. And before I get, we got to edit James Stevens. Now, how we typically do this is I take their last number, which is, for him, it's 99. F screw this guy, getting the cool number. Uh, we go down to five foot nine, and then I just move nine times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Puts him at five foot eight. Um, Got to lower their weight a little bit because he's going down from six foot two. And then up on the speed, down on the strength, up on the agility and the acceleration and down on the awareness. And then we'll keep that the same. Now, I might not change stats, but I might change the height of a lot of people. If you look at freshmen, the game really only gives us five foot nine and five foot eight. Uh, I don't think it can really naturally create a whole lot of guys that are below those heights. So uh, I might go through, I might pick a couple of the true freshmen on the roster and just lower their heights uh, depending on their uh, jersey number. So that'll kind of be a, uh, a little surprise for the next episode, I guess, to see what, uh, what new players on the team change their height. Regardless, that's going to do it. I'm going to wait to hit the start season and look at preseason uh, rankings or, you know, week one rankings until next episode. So, uh, you know, it, it may be, maybe a little bit boring if you came for gameplay, but uh, the team building, it's looking interesting. And if we could utilize the speed this year to our advantage, we, you know, we could be maybe ranked. I mean, who am I kidding? Of course we can become ranked. Maybe a New Year's Six Bowl game. Maybe we win the, the CUSA. Who knows? Maybe even we win a Natty. Year two, coming up in the next episode. Um, again, if you are interested in a little bit more NCAA, we're live throughout the week over on twitch.tv slash poonmaster69. Um, if you enjoyed the this episode or any other episode of the Dwarves and you want to know when more come out, feel free to subscribe. But otherwise, uh, my name is Poonmaster. You guys are the Short Kings. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And uh, hopefully the new mic uh, works out okay and you guys uh, don't now hate my voice. But we'll see you later. Adios.